Lamontez Jones, Patterson Brown, Emmett Till, Eric Gardner, John Crawford III, because if we forget the names of those who we're fighting for, we lose the purpose of what we're fighting for. We're here at Bandstand Park in Lindenville, and tonight is a community candlelight vigil. This was organized by some students at St. Johnsbury Academy. I'm Darby. I'm Bella. I'm Sierra. I'm Danieri. And we are NEK Girls for Equality. We light these candles for those who have passed, for those who have lost their lives, not only to police brutality and systemic racism, but for those who have lost their lives to this fight that has been going on for centuries. There Littleton was a Little protest. to New Hampshire protest. And that's where, that, that's that was where my we, first protest. Yeah, yeah that was my met. first. If I think that was all of our first protests. Oh, no. We all were kind of separate before this, but because of these protests, we've all come together. We're all different races, and it doesn't matter because we're all supporting one goal, and that's let's spread awareness through rural areas about why this is so important. No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! When I first began doing protests here in Vermont, I did not think many people were going to join. I was like, these are all predominantly white. Like, they don't understand. Like, they don't really know what's going on. But I've had people reach out to me saying that what I've been doing has really, like, helped them understand. And The first one we organized was right here, um, which was June 8th. There was, like, a lot of people. Um, we got lots of love. The police officers from Clintonville were here and they were very helpful. And to have all these people protesting and like showing how they feel about it in different ways, just seeing that is powerful. Because people like to think that there's not racism here. <laughs> and <laughs> there <it> is. <laughs> we can be a blue state and we can like, sure, we had the Underground Railroad and stuff through here and like that's all great, but like, I've seen so many Confederate flags. <laughs> when I see the, com the, the Confederate flag, like, I'm honestly like scared for my life. Well because since we are a really white state a lot of people don't really understand what's going on because they haven't experienced it personally. This is our home. Uh, I, I think we can all agree that we love this community wholeheartedly and we see the good and all we want to do is prosper and see better. I think it's important for young people to be standing up is because they're like we are the future leaders. Do you know what the KKK is? If you could go to the schools and just talk with kids because it starts there. And they would listen to you because it's not the old people like me talking. It's people like them talking. Well, other kids would probably want to learn about what is Black Lives Matter. Yeah. People can't be afraid to teach younger people about race because I learned about race. I got the race talk when I was six years old. I've spent a majority of my life here. When I was younger, um, there was a kid who would always pick on me for the color of my skin and like like my big lips, like my black eyes and stuff. I've been called the N-word seven times. Yeah. It's time for me to stop fearing for my life, and my brother's life, and my dad's life. My name is Danielis Martinez Hernandez, and I'm from the Dominican Republic. I came here around when I was seven or eight, just turning eight. That conversation about race, I was not having that with my, my parents because where I'm from, like most people are the exact same skin tone, which is my skin tone. And so then when I first came here, it was a, a shock to me, like about this conversation about race and whites and blacks. And I experienced lots of racism um, growing up. Yeah, I'm from St. Jay. It's just really important to remember that it is okay to change your opinion once you learn new information. Like I know I have. I moved here when I was 16 and it was definitely like a culture shock for me coming from such like a big area like Phoenix and then moving here. And the percentage of Vermont people that are black is like almost less than 1%, but the percentage is 8%, just a little over 8% of the prison population. We should definitely put our money towards educating kids at a younger age rather than locking them up once they're already fully grown. In regards to COVID-19, a lot more black people are getting it. Black people only make up 15% of the population, of roughly, and they're 2.5 times more likely to be killed unarmed than a white person. Like, that's so scary to me to think that I could go and have a child and I'm three times more likely to die as like she is. And that's not fair. Like, that's really just not okay. Like, these conversations can be really uncomfortable. And it's really important to just push through. Like, even though these conversations are uncomfortable, they're really important. Like, maybe we could talk to some um, lawmakers about making Juneteenth yesterday an official holiday in Vermont. Yeah. This doesn't stop here. 
this doesn't stop tomorrow. Especially from us four girls, you will see us continue to create these, these movements in our little rural community of the Northeast Kingdom. Spending an evening talking to these motivated, educated young people almost makes me think change is possible. Thanks and take care everyone. I was at a friend's house last night and we had watched a movie called The Help 10 out of 10 recommend. Uh, <laughs> we ended up having like a, an hour and a half long discussion about like the state of our country and like racism and how have we actually made progress and just having that discussion shows that we have made progress.